Today we are celebrating the Theophany. Um, it's the Sunday after Theophany, but uh, we, uh, because of the snow, we put off the, uh, uh, the celebration until today from Friday. So as we, we hear this gospel and we hear, hear this very important, this last line of the gospel, that Jesus went out and he preached. And he said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is so important for us because our whole life as Christians is based on repentance. There is no other way to the kingdom of heaven than by repentance. Uh, and, that, and what does that repentance mean? It's not about beating yourself up. It's not about feeling guilty. It's all, not about any of that kind of thing. It's being transformed by the grace of the Holy Spirit. It's having our, our uh, spiritual eyes opened, our noetic eyes opened, and, and our whole consciousness renewed by grace. There's a real transformation that happens uh, uh, in, the li- in the life of the church by the grace of the Holy Spirit, um, through the partaking of the sacraments, through, uh, uh, through prayer, through our, uh, through our good works, which are, which are according to the gospel in which uh, we're, because we are recreated in Christ for good works, to serve the poor, to love those who are, who are um, in need and homeless and afflicted and orphans and widows. This is true religion, James says, to visit the orphans and their widows in, in their affliction um, and to heed the poor, all of those who are poor, are poor who are in some kind of need or want, whether it, whether it be financial, whether it be material, whether it be spiritual, whether it be emotional. When we reach out to our neighbors, we're doing the work of God. When we're loving those who are hard to love, we're doing the work of God. And God works through us and with us and in us. And by that, we are transformed. It says when, it said that when Jesus was baptized, the heavens were opened to him and that he was with the wild beasts. Now, what, there's, a, there's a, a, a better translation for wild beasts, the four living creatures, the, uh, the, the cherubim, which were the uh, one with the head of an, a lion, one with the head of an ox, one with the head of an eagle, and one with the head of a man, who continually sing the thrice holy hymn to, uh, to God who is enthroned upon them, and to Jesus Christ, who now, who having, having died and risen from the dead, is co-enthroned with the Father. As they sing, holy, 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 Lord of God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. He was with the wild beasts. He, he, under, he, he saw the ultimate reality of his life, co-enthroned with the Father. And that this is who he was. And acting on that, what did he do? He went off into the wilderness where he was tempted. He wasn't just tempted in the wilderness. He fasted and he prayed. Because, but this revelation, this theophany, which was the revelation of God in him to the world, was something that he contemplated. He contemplated his identity as the Son of God. And thus, what goes along with that, the temptation. The temptation was from the devil saying, are you really, is that really you? Is that really who you are? And so he, there, were the, there were the temptations in the wilderness. <clears throat> when we come to Christ, when we begin our life of repentance, we're going to be tried. 
we're going to be tempted by the evil one. He's going to, who's going to ask us, is this really who you are? Is this really, are you really a Christian? Are, is your life really hidden with Christ in God? Is your true identity found in your relationship with the Father in Christ by the Holy Spirit? Of course, the answer is always yes. Because having been baptized into Christ, we have been united in him and with him by that grace of the Holy Spirit. And that's where our true identity lies. But we have a battle within ourselves with our old identity, the old man that is corrupt through sin. The, that old man, the ego, which is, which is self-centered and self-serving and, uh, and, and wants its own way, it's self-willed. But this we have to put to death. It died being buried with Christ in baptism. And that ego is not what will be resurrected. That ego is, is that true person of the, of the heart, which bears the image of God. And that's who we are. Who we are. Each one is a unique reflection of God. Each one is a unique image of God. Each one of us is uniquely created by God. We all, we all have similar DNA in our natural bodies, but we all have the same DNA in our spiritual bodies, as if there's DNA in there. Because who we are, ultimately, is hidden in Christ. Who we are is our identification with Christ. And we can only actualize that by repentance. It's very important to understand that in Orthodox, in the Orthodox understanding of things, it's not like going from one state to another. You know, with the Protestants, it's very easy. They think that um, you go from... The, from being damned, you say your little prayer, and then all of a sudden you're saved and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't lose it, you can't change it, you do anything you want. It doesn't work that way. They're sorely mistaken. Because our repentance is something that lasts our whole life. Because everything in, in our understanding of the spiritual life is process. We're in the process of being saved. We're in the process of being deified. We're in the process of cleansing our souls and our minds and our hearts from sin and from the old man. We're in the process of putting the old man to death and in the process of being born again anew in Christ by the grace of the Holy Spirit. And the church gives us these great gifts of baptism and chrismation and of the Eucharist to enable us to go through that process because, it is, because the active partner in all of this is God. All we have to do is cooperate. It's called synergy. All we have to do is hear the word of God and do it like his mother did. What we need to do is enter into that flow of God's love, which is the flow of his will, so that we manifest God's love to all of those around us and receive it for ourselves with thanksgiving. The process of repentance is not, is not bitter and, 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 and hard. The process of repentance is joyful because it lifts off 
the burden of our sins. It lifts off the burden of the world from our backs and opens our spiritual eyes. So, brothers and sisters, as we contemplate Christ's baptism on this on this day of theophany, let us also think about our own repentance, which is the which is the very substance of what it means to be a Christian, that we too might receive that that great gift of grace, which is the transformation of our very mind and our heart, our soul and our body, so that we might manifest that likeness of Christ, which is given to us from the moment of our birth in, as a pure potential, so that we may actualize that through our lives, through our actions, and especially through our faith. Amen.